today i'm going to share with you all my clinical experience of using phosphoric acid as a remedy phosphoric acid has been a very useful remedy in my practice both in acute as well as in chronic cases i shall be discussing some salient features when i have spotted acid phos clinically though introduced by samuel hanneman this remedy was extensively used by herring boger and bonegoshen in their practice very successfully with some wonderful cases i cannot forget the case of boger who was treating a case of typhoid or something like a typhoid fever where boger was asked to see the child and the best part was boger tells the parents of the child that there are no unique symptoms for me to prescribe at this stage so i'll come tomorrow and see the child he goes the next day and again the reply was the same there are no characteristic symptoms on the third day fever is rising the child is becoming more sick and bogard notices the most important thing of phosphoric acid and that is total indifference the child is sleeping on the bed and facing the wall does not want to even look at the physician doesn't even want to communicate with the physician doesn't even want to communicate with the family and boger said i got my remedy and here is phosphoric acid one dose of the remedy destroys the fever within next few hours and then the child lives happily such is the clinical observation of our stalwarts who have so much confidence in their indications for remedy that every one of us every student of homeopathy should learn from them confidence is very important when you select the remedy and that is what students have to learn from a learned and an experienced teacher So let's continue about phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is basically indicated for those people who are very strong mentally, emotionally, physically once upon a time. But due to adverse circumstances, due to chronic grief, these people become weak emotionally and physically it is said grief undermining the constitution that is what boger writes what do you mean by that undermining the constitution means gradually making the constitution weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker at physical as well as at the emotional level otherwise these people are very mild dreamy they have a very pale and a sickly complexion eyes are usually sunken that's very important and if you are lucky enough out of hundreds of acid phos patients sometimes you may see a blue margin around the eyes that's not very common but sunken eye is extremely common and a pale sickly complication and then the characteristic weakness with indifference they pay no attention to anything they don't pay any attention to the surrounding they don't like company they don't like to answer they don't like to communicate 
they don't want any presence of any person in the room they have an aversion to answer answers reflect long all that he wants is to lie down in the bed and be very quiet here you may have to differentiate bryonia also bryonia also doesn't want any disturbance bryonia also doesn't want any interruptions but the state and the pathology of phosphoric acid is far more deeper than bryonia sometimes they will be so indifferent that the face will be turned to the wall remember the case of bogar which i just mentioned to you now what makes them so indifferent the emotional weakness they are indifferent to joy if they are adult indifferent to work indifferent to any happiness indifferent to any excitement and if you ask them questions they will answer it very slowly and very late they take lot of time to respond here you may have to differentiate even remedies like helleborus which runs very parallel to acid phos in this state especially the neurological diseases phosphoric acid children as well as adults are victim of single parent syndrome victim of lack of love victim of four second feeling no love no care no protection and such children at a very early age develop so much em emotional insecurity so much emotional trauma that they are prone to lot of dentition problem in the beginning part of their life they fall very sick problem comes either in the teeth and the dentition problem or in the long bones thin bones flat bones growing pains or bad wetting or diarrhea or childhood depression in severe cases this kind of children they have tendency to grow very fast but often when they grow very fast they also have lot of bony pains so if you shake hands with them oh it pains me you touch their body oh it pains me the bones are very sensitive very tender whether it's a skull whether it's a femur whether it's a humerus the bones are very very sensitive and also brittle let me tell you that in the night they get severe growing pains they will cry they shout they shriek you have to press them you have to tie bandages to them and sometimes this emotional trauma which a child undergoes can come out in the form of dreams and nightmares nightmares are extremely common in acid phos children can't has a beautiful description about disappointment disappointment in love silent grief and chronic grief what i see in my practice is listlessness listlessness means dislike to talk dislike to answer dislike to communicate they may repeat one sentence again and again and again or many times they use statements like life is useless i don't want to live anymore everything is dark indifferent to those things that used to interest the person the most that is very important that is the beginning of depression phosphoric acid is a thick layer of depression 
even though there is an element of phosphorus in acid phos, the remedy is more depressive than cheerfulness what you see in phosphorus. They are withdrawn. I would say in a psychological word, dissolution of any interest or complete indifference, weakness, lack of reaction, cessation of growth and destruction. Dullness, introversion and so on. There is no emotional growth. There is a lot of dullness. There is no positivity. Stunted. No progress. And strong disinclination to move, to change, to grow, to expand. So why these things have to happen? One of the important things that I have discovered in the practice, in my practice, is change of relationship. So let us see what happens. Here is a family who is very happy. Suddenly the family has to move from one city to another city. Some people can adapt, some people cannot. The one who cannot are acid force. Homesick. Another change of relationship is the child is with the mother, the child is nursing, the child is lactating and then suddenly the maternity leave is over and now the mother has to go to the office and now the child has to stay with the nanny or the grandmother. That's change in relationship. Change of friends, change of partners, traveling. Changing the location, changing the job, changing the profession, changing the surrounding, changing the country, change of society. All this can affect acid force in a very, very big way. Another most important thing is academic demands that I have seen in phosphoric acid, especially academic demands in the direction of studies, new subjects, difficult subjects, mathematics, biology, computer science. These difficult subjects are very difficult for acid force to cope up with when there are academic demands. Another very important aspect that I have seen in my practice is the change that happens in a biological or a physiological way. So from infant to puberty, from puberty to a young man and then marriage, pregnancy, lactation, menopause. Such changes that happens in the life of the person usually affects phosphoric acid, like very close to sepia, very close to calcarea phos, ignatia. These physiological changes, these biological changes, has a deep suited influence on the emotions. So, a pulsatilla girl. Before puberty, after puberty when the menses start, she can become phosphoric acid. And maybe a phosphoric acid girl after puberty and when she is, becomes adult, gets married, has children, can become sepia. And then after sepia, again there is a stage of acid phos. Remedies may keep on changing depending on the situations. But these are some of the very important remedies that are closely associated with change of biological rhythm or physiological rhythm. Another very important thing that you will see over here is 
that phosphoric acid children are very badly affected by noise, music, loud music, heavy music, metallic music. If you look at the rubric, ear ache from music or head ache from music, you will see phosphoric acid. They cannot bear that kind of music and that's this is the typical situation that you see in today's society. People are totally saturated with television programs, televisions, music, music on mobile phones, music on computer, constantly addicted. This kind of addiction can turn into a state where music really aggravates the person and person comes into an phosphoric acid state or sometimes dancing now dancing goes with music always dancing affects phosphoric acid herring's guiding symptom mentions this symptom unconscious dancing insanity with dancing Another very important thing that affects phosphoric acid is reading. Not reading studies and academic things, but excessive reading of comics, novels, storybooks. A state comes when the body cannot take it anymore. There is a rubric. Dullness of the mind while reading. There is a rubric disappearing of the thoughts while reading. Now this comes when you have done lot of mental exertion reading books and novels and story books and comic books. Then comes disappointment in romantic relationship. Well puberty is the best period. Huh? School days, bunny loves, puppy loves, you tell your partner, I love you, partner says I don't love you, that kind of little tiny loves when you were a small kid, that affects phosphoric acid. Many young children, many young pre-puberty love, mostly is an acid first love. Or even broken friendships, friendships which are so delicate and tender at that particular age. I am not talking with you. You don't sit here, this is my place. If you sit, I am not talking with you. You did not come with me for picnic, so I am not talking with you. Such kind of broken friendship has a very deep-seated effect on phosphoric acid. And puberty is the prime time. Post puberty, you have little serious relationships. Here, the grief is much more stronger. <coughs> and here, due to constant quarrel, due to constant argument, you get affected. Develop grief. Develop a silent grief. And that pushes you towards depression. This is another aspect of phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid are usually a victim of a broken relationship with silent grief. They will not express, they will not fight. They are not quarrelsome like renunculus bulbosus. Renunculus bulbosus will quarrel with the person because they care for that person. If you look in the rubric quarrelsome, alternating with care, you will see renunculus bulbosus in Cairns repertory. But here, phosphoric acid takes everything within, suffers in silence, goes into depression. It's a sweet depression, quiet depression, not a noisy depression. Apathetic, they develop total lack of emotions. And why? Because their basic nature is mildness and yielding. If you see under yielding, you will see phosphoric acid 
is a very important remedy. But they are very, very overwhelmed with every emotions, every excitement. But when disappointment keeps on coming one after another in their life, they become more apathetic and it's a burnt out state of emotion. Jung says burnt out state. Burnt out state means you have lost all your emotions and now there is only a vacuum, emptiness within. And that is why you see that in indifference is nothing but lack of sensitivity. So there is lack of everything, emotions, sensitivity, thoughts, nothing, just like a piece of wood, like a piece of furniture, which has no life, lifelessness. Now, let us see some trigger factors. I won't use the word causative factors, but I would rather use the word trigger factors. Overwork is one thing that can destroy acid first, like picric acid. Sorrow, grief, excess of venery. Venery, example, commonest example in pre-puberty, puberty age, masturbation. And of course, after when you are adult, sexual excess. Lactation can trigger the acid for state. And then the earliest thing that you will see where the acid force state is coming at the physical level. We have talked a lot about at the mental level. At physical level, the first thing is night sweats. Person starts sweating in the night. That's the beginning of the acid force state or tendency towards diarrhea. That's very important. So, Weakness from emotional aspect has now come into the physical aspect. Let's see what Hahnemann says. Cannot get rid himself of a thought and the connecting ideas do not come. He dare not be alone without falling into absence of thought and unconsciousness, especially in the morning. Further, Hahnemann says, anything properly on account of want of ideas and weakness of mind, he became giddy on attempting to think about anything. What I have seen is this depressed individual, which Hahnemann talks about, have a tendency to grow very fast, to grow tall, to grow fat. See, tendency to go grow fast does not mean that only in height he becomes taller. He can also develop obesity. Obesity due to depression, phosphoric acid is a very good remedy. Adults when they go into depression, they are also prone to abuse drugs and also prone to abuse medicine. Look what happens to Michael Jackson started abusing painkillers. This is an acid for symptom. Some people abuse sleeping tablets. Some people abuse tranquilizers. In the repertory, <coughs> under generalities, there is a rubric, remedies fail to act well, selected remedies, oversensitive state when too much medicine has produced, you will see phosphoric acid as a remedy. So they abuse themselves, self-destruction. And with this abuse comes heightened sexual activity. Acid first can be a victim of chronic chagrin. Chagrin means recurrent humiliation with loss of self-respect. Chagrin invites indifference. Chagrin invites depression. So when you are in relationship with a strong person, dominating persons, dictatorial persons, you usually develop a lot of chagrin. Or when you are dependent on somebody and somebody is abusing you at an emotional level, also you develop a lot of chagrin. The most important thing that 
should make you identify chagrin is not that always the person will tell you verbally but a very early depression comes and this depression can be identified clinically when they are sitting when they are sitting on a chair or a sofa they suddenly become stuporous they suddenly become unconscious and then when you touch them they are awake with a jerk so recurrent spells of stuporness for a fraction of a second especially when they are sitting on a chair or a sofa this is a very important key symptom of phosphoric acid you can check this out in herring's guiding symptom then comes hair falling the physical part hair falling after disappointment in love death of loved ones death of parents fight with a friend quarrel with the teacher another physical symptom with indifference and depression is the pain in the vertex pain in the vertex as if vertex is crushed remember ignatia is an acute of phosphoric acid in depression and in indifference behavior ignatia is useful for an acute grief phosphoric acid is useful for a chronic grief the biggest remedy for guilt after masturbation is phosphoric acid sadness comes when the person walks but walking for a long distance also ameliorates the patient so in the initial part lot of sadness comes when the walking starts but after walking a lot you will see that the patient feels much better vanishing of thoughts while reading it's a very unique symptom of phosphoric acid dullness and indifference behavior become much more worse when they are alone than when they are in company there is a strong element of friendship in phosphoric acid like sarsaparilla broken friendship quarrels friendship disappointment in friendship betrayal in friendship deceived friendship this is all chapter of phosphoric acid and next comes embarrassment so embarrassment humiliation loss of self respect chagrin they all come together the next remedy that you should compare is tafisigria and colocent now acid phos physically is very useful for those bones which are very close to the skin so temples temporal bone tibia the radius the ulna the fingers these are the bones which are very close to the skin and they are affected the most in phosphoric acid like lycopodium acid phos has also got tendency to early graying of hair in their life they also develop coldness of the eyelids especially on closing the eyes the right pupil of acid phos patients is usually dilated we don't know the reason if you look into the repertory you'll find this and i have verified this then comes redness of the tip of the nose with gi tract disorders any gastrointestinal tract disorders like colitis dysentery diarrhea hepatitis the concomitant symptom is redness of the tip of the nose like entim crude acid phos people have got a very bad habit of boring the finger into the nose all the time in children entim crude comes in adults phosphoric acid comes heat on the side of the face which is not lying on the bed that symptom you will see in many typhoids dengue malaria influenza when acid phos is indicated crack in the middle of the lower lip like natrium mute you will see in many diarrhea cases many gi tract cases 
red strip down the tongue like causticum you will also see in phosphoric acid and when you shake hands the hands of acid first patient will be rough because there is a lot of disquamation of the skin on the fingers there may be ganglion on the wrist there will be a lot of sebaceous cyst and another unique symptom of phosphoric acid is trembling of the hands when urinating trembling of the hands while writing is a known thing but this is very unique trembling of the hands while urinating in pregnancy the important symptom worth understanding is that there is an involuntary passage of urine in the pregnant woman when there is an excessive motion of the fetus in the uterus so when the fetus is dancing and there is an excessive movement of the fetus the mother starts urinating involuntarily now we come to a very final stage of what do i see in acid first fever i think so i have treated some very very successful cases of pneumonia and typhoid basically with this remedy when i observed certain features of fever the first and the most important is heat of the face and coldness of the feet with the fever so heat of the face that's unique but the feet are cold lot of exhaustion and weakness so acid first never comes on the first day of the fever it comes after 7 8 9 10 11 15th day fever was evening night heat alternating with the chills and excessive weakness with the fever that comes excessive thirst excessive perspiration and sometimes fever comes from grief deep seated grief characteristic thing of weakness and prostration is power nap they are always better by power nap that means sleeping for 10 minutes 15 minutes cat nap sleep ameliorates their weakness prostration mentally physically in every way Hanuman talks in his Materia Medica Pura. He says there are three things which are useful to him as an indication for acid first: prostration, debility, atony of GI tract, and bone affection. This is what he talks in Materia Medica Pura. Herring says, "I have my own triad of phosphoric acid." one debility due to nervous cause ailments from sexual excess and painless and non exhausting diarrhea this is what herring says see every homeopathic is way of projecting certain remedy and developing a good confidence i see lot of patients with diabetes type 2 especially who need acid first so what do i see in diabetes and acid first after stress diabetes after grief diabetes after worries excessive cares and worries diabetes first symptom lack of appetite burning pains milky urine urine that becomes like jelly on standing excessive urine excessive thirst thirst for refreshing things apathetic hardly any emotions indifferent dullness listless bruised sore feeling in the muscles burning in the spine lot of phosphates in the urine when you examine now this is important any routine urine report shows lot of phosphate sink of phosphoric acid but diabetes of nervous origin grief worries anxiety these are the important things here you will have to differentiate uranium nitricum which comes very close to diabetic indications of phosphoric acid the difference is emaciation in uranium nitricum you will see the person emaciates within next 2 to 3 months after developing diabetes 
And another most important thing is the GI concomitant of uranium nitricum and that is excessive dyspepsia and unable to digest the food. The food remains in the stomach for hours together even after eating a meal. Another thing that I have seen in diabetic who needs acid force is the weakness of the spine, weakness of the back and that is very much in connection with weakness of the emotions. So emotions and backache, backache and emotions. In fact, you should know 40 to 45 percent of people with chronic backache are depressed. That's what is written in Harrison textbook of medicine. Another important thing is osteoporosis in adults, especially women. So the way we have got fragile bones, bone pains in children, growing pains, in adults we have got osteoporosis. Hip joint disease, specific remedy like natrum sulf, causticum, acid force is very important for hip joint disease. Then comes migraine due to straining of the eyes, lot of television, lot of reading, lot of computer works. Pain starts mostly in the occiput and the nape of the neck and headache is always worse by mental exertion, studies, academic challenges, here picric acid. The remedy that comes very close to phosphoric acid is picric acid. School going, children developing headaches like natremure, calcarea, phos and ignatia. These are the same group. Then comes diarrhea. After eating any acids, after eating any khatta, sour, slightest indiscretion and then you get diarrhea. Diarrhea which is odorless, painless and no weakness. Rotavirus, Shigella, dentitional diarrhea. Diarrhea with dehydration but no prostration undigested particles of food or sometimes you will see just clean water coming out think of phosphoric acid but at the same time they desire refreshing things Pepsi, Coca-Cola, thumbs up, chilled beer is one of the strong craving for phosphoric acid they desire pungent, hot, warm, very hot food lot of chilies. At the same time, they are extremely chilly patient. They have strong aversion for farinaceous or starchy food and strong aversion for bread. They sweat a lot in the night. Now comes their sexuality. You will see lot of debility and relaxation and importance in phosphoric acid. There is a dragging pain in the testicles. They don't enjoy sex. Ejaculation comes out very fast. They get severe pain in the back, legs, burning of the spine after every sexual act. So at a stage comes in acid force where there is a lot of impotency, erect erection dysfunction or erectile dysfunction, disorders, no stamina, sexual stamina and lot of physical symptoms crop up especially related to the polyneuritis, neuritis, burning of the spine, pain in the back and legs. There is also weakness in the chest like sternum met, lot of dyspnea, cannot talk, they talk on the telephone, you feel oh, the opposite person is breathless. So talking aggravates. So your sternum comes very close. And they have got a typical sensation of tickling in the ensiniform cartilage that is near the end of the sternum where there is ziffy sternum. Cannot talk without getting breathless or cannot talk without getting weakness. 
any loss of fluids aggravates phosphoric acid like fluids from the sex that is semen sperms diarrhea water vomiting expectoration all this fluid lacrimation can produce severe aggravation grief chagrin mental shock unhappy love bad news all this aggravates the person being chilly so draft aggravates the person music aggravates the person noise aggravates the patient talking aggravates the person what ameliorates warmth heat and a short sleep and pressure this is what ameliorates phosphoric acid thank you